Welcome to JSA TV and JSA Podcasts, the newsroom for telecom and data center professionals. I'm Jean-Marc Lima, and joining me today is Thomas Volder, chairman of the board of the Data Center Industry Association to talk us through the nation's digital infrastructure marketplace. Um, Thomas, welcome to JSA. I hope you've been keeping well for the last two years. Um, let's, let's jump right in. How do you describe the Danish data center market today? Hello, thanks for inviting me here. Well, if you look at the Danish data center market, it's uh, it's been a, a very, very interesting period uh, throughout the last, let's say, five years. Um, it, it all started off with uh, with Apple doing a, an investment with a hyperscale data center uh, roughly five, six years ago. And then after that, it just came along. Uh, we have Facebook operational now. We have uh, Google in Denmark. We have Microsoft looking at uh, building three data centers. We have Facebook, which very recently just bought an additional 212 acres of land. Um, we have Digital Realty Interact or Interaction uh, building their Copenhagen 3.0 facility. We have Digiplex building. We have Bulk. We have uh, SAP who bought land. So there's so much happening in Denmark. So it's a very, very interesting time to be part of the data center space in Denmark. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I forgot to mention something in this uh, in, in this round of what happened recently, but uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. So it's uh, it's very interesting times. Yeah, I mean every single player, um, hyperscale or not hyperscale, is basically building um, in, in the country. And the hyperscale developments have really speeded up um, in the last 12 months. And we've seen, as you mentioned, Google, Facebook, and Microsoft um, investing billions of dollars into Denmark, which some of them are actually the largest foreign capital investments um, you've ever had in the, in the country's history. Um, which is being replicated in some other countries like Ireland, Portugal, and other countries across Europe. Um, but if we look in deeper into who's coming into Denmark, um, in terms of investors, um, what investor type is driving the, the, the market forward? Well, obviously, the, the, the hyperscalers was, uh, were the first one to come. But, uh, you know, that, that's one part of the market. It, it might be very big projects, but we see a lot of co-location uh, investments going on. So our co-location segment, which is you know more or less uh, more than fifty percent of the colo space, is driven by hyperscalers. Mm -hmm. So on the colo part, we see a lot of private equity coming into this part. A lot of these uh, international companies moving in and uh, and, and buying or building co-location space. Uh, we also see uh, some uh, some some Nordic players like bulk, bulk infrastructure who who deploy data centers around the, the Nordic because they have a fiber infrastructure infrastructure business. Um, so, uh, so, so we see. I believe that on the co-location space, we actually see a lot of interesting stuff uh, going on uh, next to what is happening on the hyperscale. Hmm. Okay, uh, you, you've actually mentioned the Nordics as well. How would you kind of place Denmark within the the wider Nordic um, region play in the data center space? Because um, all the Nordic countries are very big um, in this industry. I mean, it's um, compared to the rest of Europe, they are the biggest, some of the biggest countries. Um, in the data center market, but how does Denmark place within this giant um, of the north? Well, well, if I have to place Denmark within uh, within the Nordic, uh, first of all, I believe that uh, besides from uh, from the Danes and Swedes and Norwegian and Finnish people, uh, a lot of the investors coming outside they see us as a, as a Nordic region. So it's not like a big competition between Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, Finland. But if you look at the market right now. Stockholm is, uh, you know, that's the, that's the biggest biggest hub of, of data centers in the, in the Nordic. Sweden was the the early mover in this area, so so uh, so Sweden is definitely number one when it comes to current investments, uh, or let's say current uh, capacity. Then you have uh, Denmark, which has been attracting a lot of these hyperscalers mm -hmm. for, for a number of reasons. If you look in Norway, Norway have uh, have been very very good at attracting uh, co-location investments. Finland, it has been a bit, uh, a, a bit of both, uh, but but I believe that um, Sweden is, uh, is is the biggest. Uh, it's also let's say from a population point of view, it's also the biggest uh, country in the Nordic. But but having said Sweden, then Denmark and Norway come close, and then uh, I believe believe Finland is uh, is, is number four. Um, but you can measure this in uh, in install capacity. You can measure it in, in let's say. Uh, capacity to be installed the next year. So um, uh, I think overall, we just see a booming industry and a lot of interesting stuff going on in the Nordic. And, um, and, and that's, you know, my take on it is that a lot of these investors come here because we have a lot of green energy and we have a, let's say, an innovative uh, vision on the data centers of how to, uh, you know, how to, you know, 
use the energy in the most energy efficient way. I think that's um, some of the upsides uh, of, of the model. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely been some very interesting use cases um, around sustainability in the Nordics, um, around farming lobsters and uh, heat reuse back to the grids. Um, so, so the Nordics are definitely ahead when it comes to sustainability discussions. Uh, but actually, I, I was just thinking something just came into my mind because we've had some places in Europe, so some things in Ireland, some things in the Netherlands, where governments and local councils and everything are kind of pushing back a little bit on data center development. Um, do you foresee that to become some sort of issue in the Nordics or are the Nordics um, quite at peace with data centers? What, what I see is that um, that that obviously in the in in, in the European uh, region or, or if you look in the in the flap D markets, um, that there is already a lot of data center investment, and, and and we do see that the limitations of land, uh, you know, some place they 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 even uh, uh, close for additional energy purchase for data centers. So there are some obstacles in in, in some of the other markets. Um, then they move out to to, to the Nordic uh, for, for some of the reasons I just mentioned, and um, we see ourselves as uh, you know a, a, a tier two region uh, to uh, you know uh, which will grow significant. We we don't have uh, a public opinion against data centers in uh, for sure not in uh, in Denmark, and my belief is not that that we have that in Norway or Sweden or Finland, but but for sure it's something that we have to do in um, in, in a clever way because uh, whenever we occupy a, a very big amount of energy then we need to be able from an industry to to tell you know uh, why we do that and how we do that but i believe one of the ways to uh, to to actually uh, to keep a good public opinion about that mm -hmm. is to tell that you know when you put a certain amount of energy through a data center you know you want to get the best use out, out of it and that's something that, uh, that that we really try to grow you know, uh, as as a, as a region, we we see a, a potential for you know for export port for consultancy for for work into this area. So so it's also kind of a, of something that will bring investment and uh, and, and and work in, into our region. And then uh, it, it's you know sometimes it's, the discussion is that you know if um, if if it's not placed here, it will be placed somewhere else because. Mm -hmm. Uh, I still haven't met uh, people who are ready to give up the digital uh, development. So the data has to be has to be you know processed somewhere. Um, so so that's how it is right now. But but for sure it's something that that we have to keep in mind that uh, that if we if we occupy energy for uh, you know for for other critical infrastructure, then it can be a problem. But I haven't seen it yet, uh, at least not uh, to a far extent. Okay, that's good to know. Not not as extreme as other countries, um, but um, so now that we are coming to the end of um, 2021 as well, and fastly moving into 2022, and I guess a lot of people will be very happy to leave this year behind. Um, what, what what kind of one or two things do you really expect to see um, happening in the Danish data center marketplace? Um, what I mean, two trends or two events, something they are really looking forward to next year. Um. Well, I have seen a, a, a bit of slowdown during the COVID here. Uh, so, so a lot of the planned investments has been put on hold. But I, I see now, and, and for sure in 22, that that there will be a lot of builds in the, in, in our region, Denmark, and then in the other countries in the Nordic. Um, so, so we will be very busy with that. And and the other uh, very important uh, thing I see is that we have um, that there's a lot of things going on on. Uh, on the sustainability, so we have the uh, the climate neutral data center pact. We have the, the the EU Green Deal. We have the the Fit for Fifty Five goals. Uh, there's a lot of Scope Three discussions. You know, let's move outside the data center and, and discuss uh, Scope Three. So for sure, personally, I'm going to spend a lot of time on um, on, on contributing into uh, to these. Uh, hopefully, it will not be too much regulations. It will be recommendations, <laughs> and, and then we can collectively collectively in the industry. Uh, you know, raise the bar and be even better of uh, of what we do because uh, data is uh, you know it's it's doubling uh, <laughs> every second year or how often it is. So so we need to uh, to come up with new ways to uh, you know to uh, to process this data in the most efficient way. So um so so that's two of the, the things I see from let's say from from our regional point of view. Mm. That is very interesting because I mean it is doubling as you said um, every two years and we only use about two to five percent 
um, of the data that we generate. So there's so much data that's probably being wasted with so many good ideas and probably innovations that are being missed out. Uh, but so, but on top of also running the data center, the, the Danish data center industry, um, you also run your own business um, on the side. Do you want to talk a bit about more of that and like what you're doing, what you're going to be doing next year as well? Um, just gives an overview of like the behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's uh, true that the, to, to be the president of the data center industry, that's um, uh, that's a, a volunteer job that uh, that, I, that I do next to running my own company. Uh, I get a lot of uh, knowledge and a lot of network, uh, so I really enjoy that. But um, but to pay the bills, I have my own company, which is called Volta Consult. Um, I have a background in the data center industry and uh, with some global players. And uh, for the last year, I have my own company. I'm working with uh, basically everything we discussed in this uh, interview here today. So it's everything about, uh, you know, from, from site selection, uh, investor relations, uh, infrastructure. Uh, I'm very, very interested in, uh, in, in all these sustainable innovations that, uh, that are coming into the data centers. Mm. So I work very much across the, the segment on, on, on different jobs uh, in, the, in the data center space. Mm. So that's, uh, that's for sure something I will be, uh, hopefully I will be busy on that uh, for, for the coming year, but it, uh, you know, it, it doesn't look too bad if I look at the <laughs> at, at the expected investment. So um, yeah, so so that's uh, how I see twenty twenty two. Yeah, I mean the, the the pipeline is definitely very healthy um, across the continent. Not even just Denmark, but especially Denmark, but across the continent, it's very healthy. Uh, but Thomas, that sounds very good. But uh, so if people want to learn more, get in touch um, about the Danish data center industry or Vord the consult, um, where can people go to? But the Danish data center industry, we have a we have a web page where where you can go and look and see uh, you know see our members, our projects, our uh, our events. Uh, we we have a, have a lot of stuff going on uh, every year, and our twenty twenty two program is is already on the web page, I believe. Uh, so so that's the part of the data data center industry. Volta Consult is uh, I have a web page called www.voltaconsult.dk. Uh, maybe you can <laughs> share the text here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where you can uh, can read and learn about my background and who I am, and, and, and uh, you know if, if if somebody wants to uh, to have a call or discuss further, then I'm open to that. Yeah, amazing. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of calls next year because, as I said, <laughs> I mean, this is not going to stop. <laughs> it's just going to speed hopefully, up. Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, at least yeah. for the next ten years, I think it's safe to be in the data center space. <laughs> uh, but Thomas, thank you so much for your time. Um, and thank you, our view viewers, for tuning into JSA TV and JSA Podcasts. And don't forget to check our social, social, social channels uh, for more content. Until next time, happy networking. <laughs>